On December 2nd, John Tory will be sworn in as the 65th mayor of the City of Toronto. He has a huge job ahead of him, and our next guests have some advice for him as he prepares to wear the ceremonial chain of office. Here are John Sewell, the 58th mayor of the City of Toronto, Art Eggleton, the 59th mayor of the City of Toronto, and Hazel McCallion, the soon-to-be departing and longest-serving mayor of Mississauga. And it's great to see you three here in our studio. There is a method to our madness here, you know, because I've put you in the middle to keep these two away from each other. Because they, of course, it was 34 years ago, you two ran against each other for mayor. 34 years already. That's a long time. Can you believe long time. that? Yeah. Uh, I want to start with you, John Sewell, because you were here a week ago telling everybody to vote for Olivia Chow, and I yeah. wonder how disappointed you are with oh. the outcome. Boy, did she do badly. 22% of the vote. Uh, now, of course, that's what the polls said, so I, I wasn't surprised, but uh, I was disappointed. And, of course, when she gave her 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 speech her, I mean oh was I disappointed in that too what didn't you like <laughs> oh, I just thought it was so flat absolutely hmm. flat it just didn't have anything to, to, to commend it conversely I think you liked the outcome didn't you oh I love the outcome I'm grateful we have a new mayor uh, to start with after the dysfunction and the circus that's existed here at City Hall for the last four years it's good to have a new leadership uh, City Hall but he's gonna have to work with the council too and uh, I think he's the right person to do it. So I'm grateful he got the job, John Tory. We'll talk about Mississauga in a second, but uh, I want first of all to find out you endorsed John Tory, even yes, though I did. you're in Mississauga and he's Toronto. So I presume you're happy with the outcome. I'm happy with the outcome because I believe the mayor of Toronto has to play a leadership role in getting the greater Toronto area together. We are the economic engine of Canada, and we're not working on all cylinders by any way. Dealing with the gridlock, with economic development, and we must work together. And I believe John Tory will do that because he's already done it when he wasn't mayor. He worked with the Greater Toronto Marketing Alliance. It's time that Toronto realized that they got to work with the municipalities around because our population around Toronto is the same size as Toronto and is growing far more rapidly than Toronto is growing. When Rob Ford was mayor, how actively did you think he? saw to the interests of the whole region as opposed to just the 416. He clearly indicated to me that he was only interested in, in Toronto. He did come to the ice storm when I called all the mayors together and the regional chairs, mm -hmm. and Norm Kelly came as well. And with a unanimous uh, vote by the mayors and the chairs, we got what we asked for. We asked for assistance from the province, mm -hmm. and they came through with assistance for us to deal with the ice storm. That is proof positive that we must work together for the good of Toronto and for the good of the municipalities around Toronto. John Tory, in my opinion, will do that. I would like, not many people know this, I would like the longest serving mayor in Toronto history, who I'm looking at right now, to give some advice to John Tory. He's very happy today because he's won. What's job one for him right now? Job one, I think, is building relationship with the city councillors. He's one of 45 votes, and uh, you have to get your program through by fashioning majorities on each in issue as you go along. It's not a party system. It's, uh, it's a matter of being able to coax the members of council to come along with your agenda. So I think what he has to do is call them all and, uh, and talk with them briefly and then set up subsequent meetings between now and when uh, the official swearing in occurs uh, so that he can tell them of the things that he would like to move on and hear from them so on the things they want to move on. So I think building that relationship uh, at this point is very key. I mean, there's other things too, but, but building a, his, his team to run uh, the mayor's office, of course, is very important as well. You have to do that in this period of time. But I think building relationships with the members of city council so is a very important job. So would you call one-on-one meetings, each councillor come oh, into the mayor's yes, office? Yes, yes, yes. I think every mayor should do that. Uh, and and uh, I, I think the earlier that that can be done, the better. Now, subsequently also, he needs to, it's an ongoing uh, endeavor uh, to keep in touch with the members of city council. He's gonna need a, an assistant who can, uh, can walk down the halls uh, by the corridors of the city council uh, members and keep in touch with them. And I, I so that's an important part of uh, the job as well. John Sewell, if he called you tomorrow and said, what's the first thing I, would, I should do as the new mayor, what would you tell him? Oh, I'd agree with Art. The, the, the key thing is trying to figure out who you're gonna work with on city council. I mean, John Tory's used to working in a party system. 
where you're the leader, here's the rules, blah, blah, oh, we'll have a little feedback, but fine, I make the decisions. They didn't well, listen to him when he did that, Well, and, yeah. and the point is that you try that at City Hall, tough luck, mm. you're gonna be in trouble. And he's got some big choices to make right away. Who's gonna chair the committees? Who's gonna be on the executive committee? And the question is whether he can put together an interesting team to do that. And uh, it's gonna be a challenge for him. Uh, because there, there's a real serious d d divisions among council. The, the, the people elected in the former city of Toronto are generally very progressive, and the people outside of it in the suburbs are not. So mm -hmm. he's going to have to figure out what do you do there? And, and we know that his base is in the city of Toronto and in North York, and he, he did badly in Scarborough and badly in northern Etobicoke, the places without transit. So mm -hmm. how's he going to fix all? So he's got to sit down, as, as Art says, with every person and, and sort out how he's going to put together a really strong, cohesive team of people who are going to help him govern. I think for the uh, executive committee, he's, he's got to look getting some good, smart people with nice, innovative ideas. Uh, he has to get a better gender balance. I don't think there is any at the moment. Uh, it's all men. It need, there needs Zero to be women. women. on the executive. Yeah. And, yes, that's terrible. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the next thing he also has to do is to make sure that Scarborough, North York, Etobicoke, that all of the elements of the city are on that executive. He's got to reach out to all parts of Toronto. I don't think Mayor McCallion, John Tory needs to be told that he needs more women on the executive committee, but can you imagine they've had zero until, yeah. you know, to date? Well, He's going to do something about that, yeah, I presume. Yeah, well, I think he should do something about it. I think what John Tory has to, which I had to do, I was in the private sector, very successful in a management position. And the way you run the private sector in regard to managing is quite different to when you get in the public sector. Mm -hmm. So I think he has to adjust to the public sector. There's certain things you just can't do uh, from your experience in the private sector. And that's been his experience. He's now in the public sector. I agree with both gentlemen that the uh, council in the city of Toronto is uh, I always explained there were three zoos in the Toronto, the real one, one at Queen's Park, and one at the city of Toronto. So they had three zoos. Uh, and I think that has got to be eliminated. And I guess working with the councillors, you got to make the councillors feel that their ideas or their suggestions are not overlooked. Well, to that end, I'm going to read a graphic here. I was on the phone with Mel Lastman the other day getting some advice from him. He was the first mayor of the megacity. And uh, we're calling this graphic, Who Else Gives Advice Like Mel Lastman? Nobody. Here's what he says. Before I became the mayor, I said I was going to include everyone, despite party stripe. We needed to have everyone on board. So I put Olivia Chow on the police board and gave her responsibility for child care. Joe Pantaloni, another NDP councillor, became an advocate for planting trees. David Miller, another New Democrat, became the mayor, wanted improvements on council proceedings. I did it all. I made them all feel part of the council. We fought and disagreed on many things, but it's wrong if you only give important jobs to people who support you. This is a lastmanism here. That's El Toro Poo Poo. Rob Ford got angry and threw people off committees. That's crazy. You'll need them next time and you won't get them. So here's the question. Should John Tory put some of his enemies, enemies is too strong, his political adversaries into key positions? Absolutely. I, I think Mel is uh, right on. I may not have agreed with him on the shepherd line, but anyway, I certainly would agree with him on, on this. Uh, he, he shouldn't expect to have that executive marching to his tune 100%. He should have people there that will challenge him, and that occasionally some of that executive will vote against the position should, that he takes. Should he put Rob Ford, who's now a city councillor, well, on I, the executive? I'm not going to get into to, to personalities. Uh, he, he has to find a balance. As I said, he has to find a balance that brings all of the, the component parts, Scarborough, North York, Etobicoke, City of Toronto, et cetera, into play and the gender balance. So he's got to look at a number of factors here. But I certainly agree with what Mel says. I, I would like to comment. Please. I think what he has to realize is find the expertise on his council. As I find in my council, there's one gentleman that is really good on sports. He's involved very much in sports, so I look to him for direction and, and input. So I think he should look at the expertise on his council as well as looking at his enemies, because you need the expertise on the executive committee. And there's many fields 
with 44 counselors, I'm mm -hmm. sure there's expertise in financial management, in the environment, and in many of the issues that he will be dealing with. I think you want to look for people who are really smart and have strong opinions, but are also recognizing that other people are smart and also have opinions. Mm -hmm. So in other words, you want strong people who are strong enough to recognize that they should listen to others as well. And they're the kinds of people, and I mean, this is the problem with Rob Ford, that he's not in those categories. And there are other members of council who aren't either. But you've got to get those strong people there, providing they're willing to listen to other people. And that would be a really interesting executive. And, and in fact, then he's going to have to figure out how he can you know, get his votes and pull things together. John Tory, in his victory speech last night, didn't explicitly say it, but he as much as said, Olivia Chow put some issues on the agenda during the course of this campaign that we need to move on, and she needs a role somehow. Maybe I'm reading too much into that, but he, he seemed to be saying she needs a role. Do you think you should give her a formal, like, ambassador, child ambassador of the city or something like that? I don't know. Maybe. I'm not so sure about that. Uh, you know, I think once you've been a politician and you've lost the election, maybe it's time to push away for a while and do something else for a while. I mean, I, I, you know, you didn't I, do that. I, I didn't do it, and it was yeah. a mistake. I shouldn't uh, have done that. I remember there was a by election after, you know, yeah. nine months after I lost to Art, and I ran and got elected. But I lasted in that for about a year and a half, two years, and then I left. I was so unhappy. Hmm. Um, and so, no, it, you know, once you've lost, it hurts, and you should stay away and, and regain your balance. Mind you, for the first time in 30 years, Olivia Chow is unemployed now. She could use a job, and John Tory seemed to hit it off with her on various issues during the course of the campaign. Should he give her some formal role in his administration? I don't know. I, I don't know the compatibility uh, of, of them together, working together. Uh, you know, one thing about this election campaign uh, that was very disturbing, it was very uncivil. Uh, I, the kinds of attacks... Uh, I thought were terrible that were going on. I, the campaign was too long to start with. So I, th th this perhaps upsets uh, some personal relationships. I don't know. But I, I think we've got to certainly get back to more civility uh, and not have the kind of attacks we had and have shorter campaigns. And not all those debates, 50 debates. John and yeah. I had two or three. Sure, and and uh, it was, uh, we, I think we were very civil with each other. But I, I, I don't think it's not, it's not just the mayoralty stuff. I mean, we're in a council where there were 38 incumbents running for re-election. 37 of them got re-elected. Mm -hmm. So it's almost the same kind of council we had mm -hmm. with all of those failings. Uh, you know, my argument would be, we got to do some re restructuring here, folks. This ain't working. Um, but, you know, I, I, that's not an issue that, that uh, John Tory has talked about. But maybe that's something that comes along. Ms. McCallion, John Tory won the second largest number of votes in the history of the megacity last night, almost 400,000 votes. So he has this very sizable mandate yep. because he got so many votes. On the other hand, he's one vote out of 45 on council. How do you get your program through when you're really one out of 45 and the other 44 probably think they can do a better job at mayor than you can? Yeah. Well, I think it's very difficult, uh, you know, uh, as a mayor, we don't have the authority that we should have. But uh, with an executive committee, I think that's a good system, which we don't have in the other municipalities. It's only Toronto that has an executive committee. And of course, Toronto has its own municipal act. We don't have that in the rest of the municipalities. So therefore, I think there has to be more authority at the local level, either granted to the mayor or to an executive committee to make decisions. Because quite honestly, the municipalities have grown up. We're no longer children of the province. We're, we're providing the economic, uh, so the economic base for Canada in the large urban centers. And uh, the social costs are at the local level. The environment, improvement in the environment is that everything is at the local level. But we don't have the authority and we certainly don't have the funding uh, to discharge our responsibilities. I don't know about uh, the, the more power aspect. John, John and I operated a, a pre-amalgamation on a, a different basis, and we, we didn't have the kind of authority that the mayor of Toronto uh, has today. But 
Look at uh, how that authority was used in this past council and uh, the trouble we uh, ran into. Well, so they I, took it away from them. Uh, yes, yeah. well, I, th I think we have to be very careful about uh, how much power we give to the one individual. Uh, I agree. This idea, the stronger mayor, give the mayor more power, I'm not so sure I agree with that. I think the problem is the council's too large. You know, you get a council of more, a group of more than about 25 people, it's really hard to make any good decisions and, and make it function. So, and you know, most municipal councils in Canada are less than 20 people. Hmm. You know, Toronto and Montreal, I think, are the only two yeah. that have, a, you know, more than 25 people. So would you favor going to Queen's Park saying cut the number of city councillors in half? I certainly believe that having a council of less than 25 will work better. Does that mean Toronto should be the same size as it now is? Well, I'm not so sure about that. The ridings now are very, very large, which helps the incumbents, unfortunately. Um, so, so I think there's some questions. But the point you have to, to recognize is that a large council of 45 is unwieldy. It doesn't mm -hmm. work well. Do you find that uh, you've got, what, eight well, or nine you know, in Mississauga? Years ago, you had board of control. You had a board of control. Well, uh, uh, what I'm not saying, you must give the municipalities more authority. Not necessarily giving the mayor more authority, well, but, but the mayor with a board of control or an executive committee could make decisions that can't be with a 44-member council. I don't quarrel with giving uh, the council more authority. Particularly, I'd like it to have more financial authority. Exactly. I'd like it to have the ability to levy a, 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 a sales tax maybe even some income tax, as many other municipalities in the rest of the world do. We're short on money, we don't have the money we need, and, and unfortunately John Tory has said, oh, can't even talk about those things. But that's what we should be talking about. We should be going to Queen's Park and saying, we want the legislation to levy some more taxes to actually pay for all the stuff well, we need. This idea of begging from governments, well, yeah. and, and John out. Tory saying, I'm a great beggar, I can really no. get along with that, this hand is not out. a good you strategy. You can do financial planning, either in the private sector with handouts, or the public sector. That's what we live on, handouts. We don't know when it's coming. How do you do finan financial planning? You, you just can't do it. So we need more authority, more tough. authority at the local level, and more sustainable funding that we can do financial planning. But, but Art, I believe that, in fact, if you ask the provincial government for the ability for the local municipality to lay tight, they would probably say yes. I mean, the, the province doesn't have any money. Gets them off the hook and in some respects. It best. does, it does. And uh, we actually, a number of us asked David Miller to request that in the new City of Toronto Act, and he, re he didn't want to touch it. And, of but, course, you can understand why, because, oh, if you have the power, you might have yeah. to decide I, to raise you might taxes. Use it. But, I, just, I mean, Kathleen Wynne has shown in the last provincial yeah. election, she actually had a tax increase there, yeah. and income's over 150000 Wasn't even an issue in the election campaign. She won. Well, I just come back from the states. I got a hotel bill. State tax, city tax. Mm -hmm. We're not allowed to do that. We should be, think of what Toronto would get if they had taxes on all the hotel bills. Think of what the hotel association would, I mean, they'd be, they'd be down your throat in five seconds exactly. saying you're gonna put it's us like out of the business. Exactly, transfer tax. I mean, the real estate, uh, muni uh, a, a, a real estate association in uh, Mississauga well, went that's why wild. I sales tax. Sales when, tax when would be wild. Well, you when know what? I'm not adverse to any of that because I, I'll tell you, they, you can't run a city like Toronto on just the property yeah, tax. Because you, you can't raise enough money that way? You can't no. raise enough money to be able to provide the services and the needs of our city. So it does result in, in going and asking the other levels of government. But it's been a long haul. A lot of us for a long period of time said there, there needs to be a better division of the pie. But those, the people that are running the governments in Queen's Park and, and Ottawa mm. haven't been listening. Well, they, the thing they don't like doing is raising taxes themselves and then turning it over to municipality. Mm -hmm. and you can understand why. Sure. So therefore, that's why cities should have that power. Gotcha. Could it be, but maybe the new council will ask for that power. I want well, to, uh, Sheldon, I want to go to chapter three here. I want to go right to the chapter on the media. So let's skip that With board. And I want to, t somebody tweeted this morning, the media got their man elected, uh, which raises a bunch of questions about whether or not the media fairly and accurately covered the campaign that Ontario's capital city has just gone through and whether because John Tory was a member of the media for a while when he had that talk show on the radio, uh, and clearly a lot of the media having endorsed him, all four major Toronto dailies endorsed Tory, and were very unhappy, all of them were, with the uh, quote unquote the Ford Follies of the last four years. 
whether the media, in fact, had it out for Ford and wanted their guy to win. What do you say, Art Eggleton? Well, I, I, I don't think so in terms of the working media. Certainly the editorial commentaries were all in favor of uh, Tory, and I, I, I think there was a, an anybody but Ford kind of mood out uh, there. Uh, and, and I think Olivia uh, would have done better, uh, except for the fact that uh, that anybody but Ford uh, mindset was there and people went to Tory. Some of her supporters uh, went to Tory to, uh, to stop uh, Ford from uh, getting elected. He still got a lot of votes. He did. And uh, so. Well, and, and I mean, I, I think it, it's fairly interesting to recognize that the voter turnout was higher than it's ever been. I think mm -hmm. about 60 percent. Mm -hmm. My son's theory is a quite straightforward one. Were it not for Doug Ford running, a lot of people wouldn't have voted at all. Mm. He's the reason why a lot of people mm. voted, right? So, um, uh, in other words, to get rid of him? No, mean, no, voted no. for him. Oh, to, oh no, I people see. in Scarborough okay. and Etobicoke, mm. they were the they voted for him. And if they hadn't have voted, the the voting turnout probably would have been forty five percent or something like that. But in, in terms of the coverage, I mean, I think the Fords got way, way, way too much coverage. I was just tired of always reading about them and pictures of them doing this and that. So I don't think the media was generally saying, oh, well, it's all going to focus on John Tory. I, that's not my impression at all. And certainly the analysis of his major platform, which is the smart track, was damning. I don't think there was anybody who looked at it who thought that it was a really good idea and, and was a feasible idea. So I don't think we're, we're in a position where the media tried to say to people, hey, you've got to vote for Ford. Yes, they did editorially in the last few, for Tory. You, you've got to do it in the last few days, they said, but, mm -hmm. but that's a normal thing. Yeah, in fact, I'd, on I'd the like smart ask, track, I I'd think like there was too much criticism yeah. because I, I think it is a good plan. Yeah. And, uh, but, but I saw more criticism in the media than I did see uh, uh, in favor of it, so uh, I, like I think it was balanced. I'd like to question to these two gentlemen that weren't mayor. Go for Do it. Do you agree with me that the mayor of Toronto should be the leader in bringing the municipalities in the greater Toronto area together? Toronto will not be a success because we're growing around in a big way. Our population is equal to Toronto and growing rapidly. Toronto has to realize that they don't have everything and that the, if we put the entire GTA together as an economic unit, which is the economic engine of Canada, mm -hmm. not operating at all on our own cylinders, I believe we could deal with the gridlock in a far more responsible way than it is being dealt with now. I, I, I certainly agree that the mayor and the city council should play a leadership role. Not just the mayor, but the city council as well. And, and maybe, maybe John Tory will actually try and arrange that so that there are members of council who have responsibilities on a regional kind of basis. No question, that's a, something that's very, very important. I mean, I, when I was mayor, I actually convened a committee called the Mayors of, of Large Cities in Ontario which hadn't happened before. It's now something that, that people have done quite frequently. So I, I agree very much with this notion of the Toronto playing a leadership role. Well, I think it's a good question that Hazel asks, and I, I, I totally agree. I think we need to be there part of a le leadership role. We're part of a city region. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the boundaries between Mississauga and Toronto and between the other areas there it's artificial they're, they're really artificial, it's artificial. we should get rid of mississauga maybe oh i'm sorry hey so i didn't mean to say that no we should get rid of the toronto act that prevents our buses from picking up people in toronto we have it with oakville integrated transit we have integrated transit with brampton we don't have it with toronto toronto act prevents us you can take Hazel out of the mayor's job, but you can't take uh, the mayor's job out of Hazel. Ever, <laughs> ever I suspect. Well, can't take Mississauga out of Hazel. There you go. I, you, you've all experienced, to lesser or greater degrees, a honeymoon when you won. Um, I want to find out how long you think the honeymoon's going to last for John Tory, uh, because um, he's the guy who's pledged to bring everybody together. And yet we all know that uh, the newspapers um, of this city uh, love a good fight, and they may miss having the Fords to kick around. So well, how long yeah. is the honeymoon going to last? Well, I, there seems to be an expectation on the part of the media that, that uh, new politicians should deliver something within 100 days. And I think uh, there's a tendency to try to look for what's, 
we would call the low-hanging fruit, the things that are easy to deliver on, the things that uh, you can start to build a record on within the 100 days. So I expect that that will somehow drive the agenda. Mayor McCallion, how much well, of a honeymoon I've, I've, does he get? Well, I've had a long honeymoon, 36 <laughs> years. I don't, I don't know how much. <laughs> <That's a laughs> and What's John Tory going to get for a honeymoon? Well, uh, you know, I think the mayor of Calgary said it best. We were at a big city mayor's caucus, and he said, you know, the, uh, and he had only been elected six months, and we were sitting around the table with the mayor of Montreal, the mayor of uh, Vancouver, the mayor of Winnipeg, et cetera, and, and he said, you know, the press has been very good to me. And we said to him, wait till the honeymoon's over. <laughs> and he admitted a year later, the honeymoon's over. Honeymoon's over. I think it'll last a long time. I, I think people are all ready for John Tory. I agree with the remarks that were made earlier that, that we had all this dysfunction. So I think people are looking forward to something that's a bit balanced and more straightforward. I think people are going to like that. From your own experience, what brings a honeymoon to an end? Oh, you end up doing something really stupid. <laughs> that brings it. And the problem in public life is that it's very easy to walk into something very stupid with the best of intentions. That the, the number of choices you have to make, the issues you're presented with, that in fact it's easy to walk into something stupid. Hmm. Um, and I, I'm, I'm sure he's going to do it. I mean, we all do. How do you avoid it? I don't think you can. I think hmm. things are complicated enough. There are so many decisions, you're bound to walk into something stupid. And then people can say, well, there he is, that John Tory, we always knew. And the point is that, you know, in, in our own private lives, we're always walking into things that are stupid yeah. and we think, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. Yeah. But in fact, it's our private lives. But when you're in public life, it's in public and that's the problem. When, I, when I got elected, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it wasn't long before uh, the media were saying, uh, I just wasn't as colorful as John Sewell. Well, that was true. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Who well, could any be more colorful than John Sewell? He was pretty colorful, that's for sure. That's for sure. I want to just ask, uh, I know none of you represented this municipality, but Brampton was one of the more interesting mayor's races across the province last night, in part because you had an incumbent mayor who'd been there for 14 years and ended up, I think, with 14% of the votes at the end of the night, she came third, Susan Fennell. Now you knew her probably best out of all of the three guests today. Uh, did the media have it out for her? Uh, well, I think the media loves controversy. The media likes to report the negative side of any issue. And sometimes they don't do their homework very well in reporting maybe the other side. I think the situation in Brampton is very confusing when you have uh, a, a, a named auditing firm do a forensic audit and say that the mayor is guilty to this degree and then have an arbitrator come along and say, oh, no way is it anywhere near. I think the professionals have to get their act together to decide whether wrongdoing was done in Brampton to the degree that the re that the press reported. But the press reported the forensic audit report. I mean, what more can they do? Well, they, did she deserve to lose that badly last night? You know her, Susan Fennell. I, I think that she did some things that certainly were not acceptable to the citizens of, of Brampton. There's no question about it. Uh, whether they, they lacked an expense policy, they went on an honor system a few years ago wow. that I just don't Craziness. understand. Absolute craziness. Yeah, you know, to go on an honor. They were all guilty, according, well, I'm not sure all, but most of them were guilty of spending money. 95 percent of the councillors, I think, mm -hmm. had misused, misused the honor system of expenses. There's no such thing as an honor system What's in politics. Well, I, I, <laughs> I happen to think that um, people in public life have responsibility to try and defend themselves and put forward their position strongly. Mm. And I think the, the problem in, in Susan Fennell's position, she didn't do that. And therefore, the voters said, that's it. Hmm. There has to be proper accountability for public funds, and uh, we're going through that in the Senate. Yeah, well, I haven't mentioned yet once on this program <laughs> that you are actually still a senator, aren't you? For potentially four more years. Uh, okay, but that's another show. I can't wait to get you two back here to argue about whether or not the Senate ought to be. You say yes and you say no, and, but that's another show. That's we, good. We got about three and a half minutes here, and I want to just, Hamilton, Sudbury, London, 
Windsor, Kingston, Kitchener, Brampton, Mississauga. A lot of cities not named Toronto all have rookie mayors this morning. And even Toronto has a rookie mayor. But I want to know from, again, all of your experience, how do these other cities get their issues on the province's agenda with rookie mayors who may not have that much experience dealing with these kinds of things? Now, some of them will, obviously, but some of them won't. Mayor McCallion, start us off. Well, one of the, uh, we, let's not talk about rookie mayors. Uh, the media in Toronto does not address the municipalities around Toronto. This whole election in the press was all about Toronto. Mississauga issues got a little bit of coverage, especially uh, the situation in Brampton because it's negative. Mm -hmm. But we, we don't get the uh, uh, we don't get any publicity at all. The TV stations are all Toronto. Newspapers are all Toronto. I think the Star does the better job with the GTA page, which at least gives us some coverage. I think that's a great disadvantage. So, uh, in my opinion, uh, the rookie mayors, uh, I, I guess you call Bonnie Crombie a rookie mayor coming forward. Well, She's she been is. on council a short period of time. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think the people are, uh, especially the young people, you gotta, the young people of the municipalities are becoming very active, in my opinion. I can only speak for Mississauga. Becoming very active in in uh, in the community and they're looking uh, to see a change a new approach uh, to politics John and so I think uh, I think Trudeau is going to be an example for, uh, in the next federal election uh, a younger man yes they'll say he has got the experience okay madam mayor one but, one election at a time here let's let's leave le next so, year till next year uh, John I mean there is a problem for small municipalities, not smaller, smaller cities actually getting their word in at the province. And I think it can only be done in conjunction with other small cities. I, I don't think there's any other way of doing it. Some of the demands are very specific to the municipality. They're easy to deal with. You deal with your local MPP and say, look, at we, we need blood. Okay, that's easy. But the bigger issues deal with money. And, and major infrastructure things. And I think they're only going to happen by those mayors getting together, talking to each other, forming alliances, and trying to figure out how they're going to actually take that position up to Queen's Park. Well, two things about this. First of all, by and large, rookie mayors are not rookie councillors. Most of them come from within the council. In fact, I'm straining to think whether John Tory might be the first elected from outside. He's the first the in 100 years. 100 years. 100 100 years. years. Who doesn't have a seat on council. Right. Most of them, though, in most of the cities that you're talking about, they, they were city councillors, so they know their way around a, a fair bit. Secondly, there are the associations, the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, uh, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, where they can meet, where they can get the kind of infrastructure support uh, on issues in a, in a collaborative and collective way. Those are val valuable for rookie mayors. The problem with the, the, the Association of Municipalities of Ontario or the Federation of Canadian is they're often weighed down by very small municipalities. And you Toronto's know, I, not I part of it. I that, think that because, you know, all municipalities are allowed, so their concerns are not about cities, they're about other things. And so I think there's going to, the, 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 these mayors of these cities, which, you know, 100, 150, 200,000 more people, they're in fact, they're going to have to be, uh, they're going to have to get together themselves and try and sort out well, what they you, want. You I, I'm afraid to, I'm going to jump in here. City mayors Big, together, right? Stand by, everybody. Stand by. The, large the speaker, yeah. your worship, you? your worship. I've got to bring down the gavel here because we've got to save some time to talk about your book, okay? Oh, and I know you want me to do that. <laughs> so can I thank uh, all of your worships, Art Eggleton, John Sewell and Hazel McCallion. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at tvo.org.